So it feels like you're not happy with the current solution. <laughs> Are you? Uh, well, it's quite good, but there's a lot of like uh, cognitive load. You have to uh, learn. Uh, they've done a lot of custom things as opposed to going for with more of a standard solution. Okay. For example, like it's a, it's a large, sort of a large company and there is like another team in another business unit doing a similar type of split. Uh, but they have chosen to, to architect them independently. So basically they just have the same acceptance tests. So they both behave the same from the outside world, but inside when you write the, uh, Kotlin or Swift, they're writing them, uh, independent. They don't have to have the same internal private classes or interfaces. Okay. This it seems to be like the way I think you can go faster. Um, but, uh, you know, there's also some advantages to being class to class compatible. I, I would lean towards the, the way where, uh, where the, where the implementations are independent mm -hmm. because I love the Swift language and you can take advantage of it. And Kotlin also, you can take advantage of uh, what Kotlin has to offer. Yeah, and if you try to make it one-to-one, -one, you're going to have to make decisions that are no optimal for both sometimes, right? Yeah, that's what I always say. If you want to design a car that you can sell in England and France, you can design <laughs> it with the steering wheel right in the middle. Right. You know? <laughs> and then you make a car that is no good for anyone. You know? Exactly. So, But uh, there are some cases where this saves a lot of time, having one car. Yes. There are benefits as well to... Uh, sharing code between platforms even mm -hmm. are you sharing any code between swift and kotlin or is it like um, completely no no but like the architecture is is this is similar so architecture diagrams are shared <laughs> right but like actually like they have different dependencies uh so like the ios and android will use like they'll use some of the hardware in the phones and they use different interfaces there so so we have like the separate adapters that are injected or so and the sdk is internal only right you don't share these with clients do you have any plans of sharing with other teams yeah the sdk is also a product so the sdk will also be implemented oh, by no. clients okay that's important then yes okay is shared with clients so they know about the external api of it but they don't know about the internals All right Yes, that's that's the point I wanted to get. You will want if you have on Swift SDK, the clients will interact with at least the public interfaces should be one hundred percent in Swift with standard definitions of what Swift developers would expect from a Swift framework. Right, you wouldn't expect stuff like get boolean, you know, things like that. Mm, right. <laughs> Right. There may be those type of things. Yes. Now, it doesn't mean you don't need, you need to have a completely separate SDKs because of that, because you can have a public interface written in Swift, but everything that's private behind the scenes can be a one-on-one -on -one match with right. both the Android, Kotlin, and the Swift one exactly the same as it is right now right so even though you have the solution right now that maybe you're not happy with because it doesn't share like a public interface they would expect you can create that public interface and behind the scenes use that solution so that's how you can start approaching it to deliver like an SDK to your clients that they will be able to easily understand and use like something that Swift developer would expect to see. And you only expose this public interface without exposing the underlying mechanism, which means that at some point you could even try to deploy a Kotlin version that works for multi-platform with the same public interface, right? You have much freedom. As long as this public interface it, the, the clients only interact with this public interface they created the underlying implementation doesn't matter that much right so you can either decide you know what everything is going to be in kotlin so we don't need to keep two frameworks 
we're gonna build Kotlin for Swift. And but our clients will not interact with that. Either the clients they're internal in the company, the teams in the company, and the clients outside the company they will be shipping this SDK to. They will interact with the public interface. They will design in Swift with standard Swift like conventions, right? And behind the scenes, maybe everything is a class, but the public interface will convert things to structs or enums, whatever makes sense. So this is a strategy you can start thinking about. That's what I would do if I'm dealing with an existing solution that doesn't have like good interfaces to interact with. I would create a in-between layer. And then on your diagram, you would have the Kotlin uh, uh, public interface as well. And uh, then I guess the documentation, uh, you could be smart about writing the documentation and uh, use the right method names as appropriate. Yes. They can be separate products. They probably should be. They're different yeah. entry points, mm -hmm. right? But behind the mm -hmm. scenes, maybe they are using the same. But your clients don't know about that. Right? Right, right. It will depend on the internal structure of your team. If you're happy to write it twice in both languages, that's fine. That works fine. But going from an existing solution, I would start working on a public interface using that existing solution behind the scenes. So I can keep delivering value to my clients, to the other teams in the company. And because of that, I have the freedom to later make changes to the implementation without breaking the clients. As long as we keep the same public interface, you can make any change. You're free to change how this works. If it's written in Swift, in Kotlin, Objective-C, it doesn't matter. Because the, the, facing, the public facing interface is Swift, the interface you want. So write the interface you want, but behind the scenes, you can use a framework that you're not happy with. Okay, great. So then I should maybe concentrate a little bit more on that public interface. That's the important, that's maybe yeah, the, the, the first part. step. Because mm. when you have the good interface they want, then you can start seeing how to start writing the, or refactoring the existing code, or just keeping it one-on-one -on -one with Kotlin. Even if they are, you don't like the design because it doesn't make much sense in Swift. If you think that is still the benefit of having this one-on-one -on -one match, as you say, for bug fixing, right? For any kind of, for teams even, like you can get a Kotlin developer to join the Swift team for a while and vice versa, right? Because they're sharing the same design. One fun thing we do at the company is that uh, we involve everybody in everything. Uh, so we do mob and uh, we're involved in uh, both both sides of the development. Awesome. Awesome. Really get to increase your own personal value. It's pretty cool. So that's my suggestion. Public interface, there is different for both languages, platforms. But behind the scenes, you can either share Kotlin, compile Kotlin for Swift. You have one-on-one, or you can completely rewrite it following that interface as well, without breaking clients. You have freedom. Okay, then part two is, behind the scenes, what would you do? <laughs> How would you approach it from scratch? Like? It really depends on the, on the project. I don't think there is a final solution. If it's a massive SDK and you have a lot of people writing the code twice, I'll probably give it a try on doing the Kotlin, you know, that you build Kotlin for both platforms. I'll give it a try, you know, maybe do a hackathon and see how hard it will be. If there, is, there are benefits, it's not that hard. Now we have one team creating the code once. When there's a bug fix, you fix bugs for both. And you just plug that with a Swift interface.
for your clients. So your clients shouldn't know about that. But what you need to pay attention as well, it's going to change like, what is the binary size? Would, will you have a, hmm. an effect in the binary size by using Kotlin there? Do you need to embed a bunch of libraries for that to work? Because if you're shipping an SDK to clients, those things start to matter, right? Yeah. Like, imagine like you add Firebase to your app and suddenly you have 100 megabytes more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. So this can be a problem. So we will have to add extra steps to your customers. We will have any breaking like dependencies your clients need to care about. Right. So all of these yeah. you have to put in the the decision making list, like pros and cons. And these ones are are solved basically with the hackathon or doing little experiments? Yeah. Try and figure yeah, small out. experiments, like quick experiments, mm -hmm. binary size, how hard would it be? Like, do I need to install a bunch of libraries? Do I need to make my clients install a bunch of libraries for the Kotlin thing to work? Are those libraries well maintained? Yeah, and if you know if the team or the company doesn't provide the time to do a hackathon, you know, like maybe you can do it in your own time just to experiment and you know, like understand in a deeper level how the systems can uh, interoperate between them, and that's a good thing, you know. It's a good skill to have. Yeah, it's it's also pretty fun. I would recommend. I tried just making some simple object and calling stuff from Swift. It's great. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's a Swift object. You can do these extensions on it and everything, even though it's a Kotlin object. It's pretty cool. It uses Arc as well, not not garbage collection for memory management. It's pretty cool. But more experiments. I, I didn't yeah. check binary Formance, size, for example. Mm. Binary size. Maybe some bugs. Things that work when you run the tests. Make sure that you run tests on both platforms because some tests may pass on Kotlin Android um, processor, but there is a bug in the compiler from Kotlin to Swift or Kotlin to C that will actually result in different results, right? So we need to run the tests on both platforms, all tests. On all platforms to support. Even if you support iOS and macOS, when you run tests, the same library, SDKs, like we maintain some SDKs in both platforms. They pass on iOS, but they don't pass on macOS because there is a permission thing in the file system that is different, or you need an entitlement for accessing the network input output. Like that, you know, there are platform specific things that sometimes like it works on iOS 15.2, but doesn't work on 15.1. So platform and OS versions as well. Language versions. And who's maintaining the Kotlin to Swift project? Is this something that will be maintained over time? All this. And if it's not maintained, do you have people in your team that could keep maintaining that going forward? What kind of resources do you have in your team to do this kind of support? So this comes down mm. to skills in the team and resources. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good point. Here, depending on third party hmm. compatibility that may not exist tomorrow, right? Who does Kotlin? Is he JetBrain? JetBrains? Maybe they go bankrupt. Maybe they're bought by someone else and they say, you know what? We are, maybe Google buys them and say Kotlin is out. <laughs> it can happen, right? So there is a, a risk here. There's, now, how big is that a risk for you? And, what would be the worst case scenario and how would you manage that? All of these you need to bring to the table. And if you realize that no, it's not it's not worth the risk, we'd better write the native implementation in both 
Swift and Kotlin, then you have your answer there as well. But like you shouldn't be doing this check here for months. Yeah. No, it tries to enter this quickly, like in yes. a week time. <laughs> answer all these questions. Like because if you're like Facebook and they create this React and they create all these solutions, like internally they have hundreds and hundreds of engineers creating tools to support that workflow for their teams. Maybe the company you're working for don't have those resources. So don't act like Facebook if you're not Facebook, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so productivity should be the goal and you know, like be careful of any paralysis here that might be caused by all this analysis and all the experiments, you know. Yeah, great point. Big picture. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This should be yes. the end goal, you know. As developers, we tend to get a bit more dogmatic, you know, into some technologies and ways of doing things but you know in the matter in the eyes of the market you know that doesn't matter you know <laughs> and mm -hmm. the, your, the clients as well you know they just want something you know to use so they can create products and ship to their clients and so on right so that's what's truly important yes they just want it to work they don't care about architecture any of this stuff <laughs> yes <laughs> classes structs <laughs> Who cares? Thank you very much. And if we're sharing, starting from scratch? Oh, yes. Mm. Right. I will do this research here, figure it out if it makes sense to use a solution that is for both. If not, I will write in Swift, a public interface. And behind the scenes, I will just probably go free between the two teams say write it as long as it fulfill the requirements and how do we know it fulfill the requirements share acceptance tests it will run exactly the same acceptance tests in both platforms so they should pass now can there be bugs even though the tests are passing yes it's not bulletproof <laughs> there can be a bug in ios and not in android but even if they're sharing one-on-one -on -one, there can still be those bugs there mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. because one language is using maybe arc the other language is using garbage collector and then there are differences there might be a memory leak in one and not in the other or an object may be deallocated too early in one and not in the other right mm -hmm. so there's still some bugs so this is not bulletproof but at, at least for the behavior the behavior should be the same and both teams should follow test dream development to Although you have the acceptance tests checking the behavior, you should have the developer tests you are developing to make sure that your implementation works. Mm 